Hey guys, and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith, and today we are doing a really special project. So, I got this pattern from an Enchanted Fabrics. Enchanted Fabrics is a UK based company, and if you know, if you've ever tried to order any fabrics from the UK, shipping is kind of ridiculous. So, K&A Custom Fabrics and Enchanted Fabrics have a thing called a swap shop. If you want to hear more about that and save on shipping, make sure that you watch to the end of the video and I'll explain kind of how everything works for you guys. That way you can try and uh, do it yourself. In this video today, I wanted to show you how we put together our cute little dragon. She's so cute. Oh my goodness. So cute. So I got the original pattern from uh, Enchanted and then I looked up the artist that actually did the panels and I emailed them and asked them can I do a tutorial for you guys and they said yes absolutely. I wanted to do a shout out to them. It is so de su ne. I'm going to butcher that up. So I'm going to put the name. I will also link them down below. They gave me permission to, to do the video and I'm so glad they did because it was so much fun. This is a really, really quick sew. You are going to do just a little bit of hand sewing with this one because um, we got to put the ears on. Um, I did the back of the neck just a little bit different um, than the original instructions, which by the way are downloadable for free. You can just go on their site. Um, and be able to download them. Also, when I'm making this project, I want to go ahead and now that it's done and I've got, I heard feedback, um, I used an inch and, and a quarter, I believe, zipper. You really want to make sure that you just use a, an inch zipper, like your regular everyday zippers. Um, I used the inch and the quarter and it gave me extra fabric, like my front of my head and the back of my head didn't meet up. So make sure that you use a smaller zipper. I believe that's what I did wrong. Um, I asked them um, what I what I possibly could have done that wouldn't have made it match up. And that's what they suggested was to make sure that I use the right size zipper. So keep that in mind. You can't just use the zippers you've got laying around for your purse. Let's get started. All right, so as you probably watched me, I cut all these pieces up into smaller pieces so that it was a little bit easier for me to be able to kind of maneuver everything. Um, I didn't cut out all of the individual pieces because they have um, what they are. Some of them have directions on them, so I don't want to lose all that information. So I'm just going to cut out the pieces when it's time to do it and all that jazz. So went ahead and cut out two they were on the bottom of the panel and if you'll notice that they are all mirrored you're going to need to cut out one row at a time for each one so I cut out the bottom one and I'm just going to put them right sides together I have got my domestic right here we're going to use her today um, the seam allowances for all of these in the instructions say a quarter of an inch so I just want to let put it out there if I forget to tell you guys it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's a quarter of an inch seam allowance so let me get the camera moved and then we'll get started. Alright so I've got my pieces I'm going to be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Before you try and turn this inside out, you're going to need to do one thing right where your stitches are kind of meeting up at a point. You're going to need to make a cut not on your stitches. You don't want to cut your stitches, okay? You just want to cut into in front of your stitches so that this will turn a little bit better. And you've got to do it at both of those places so just make sure you don't snip your um, your thread all right so I went a little notch crazy <laughs> um, on the corners right there you're gonna want to cut those out I just want this to turn turn inside out nicely so I made a couple of notches around the round parts and then on the top I just kind of made notches on the edges so then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna turn it inside out I was thinking about taking it to the ironing board and kind of pressing it and I don't think I'm going to do that I don't think it's all that um, I don't think you need to do all of that and I could be wrong we'll find out in a little bit I'm going to get my little tool 
I'm going to get my non-pointy scissors. It's got a rounded top so I can take them to turn things if I need to. I don't think you top stitch this. I'm going to check real quick before we do it. I think it's just left. It's supposed to be left to like free float. When you cut out the left side, I cut out the left side first. When I cut that out, I notice there's like a little gray piece right here. That's going to be inside of your seam allowance. You won't see that, but that is so that you know exactly where to place this. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I am going to baste stitch this in place just so that when I'm adding the other side on and stuff, it doesn't give me a fit. So I'm going to go do that real quick. All right, so I went and I double checked the directions and everything, so I'm doing it right. All right, you are supposed to base stitch. Base stitching is just using an extended stitch to be able to like an eighth of an inch, keep this attached to your face so that you don't have to worry about trying to keep it pinned while you're trying to do something else. Now, I went ahead and I cut out the right side of my face. Next thing that you're going to do, um, hopefully when you're cutting these out, you see these little notches right here? You're going to want to make sure you cut those out. Those are going to help us match up our face on this side. I'm going to go ahead. I should have got some clips. Like the good strong clips. You're going to put right side, right side to right side, and we're going to be sewing down where we have our little um, spike. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm going to finish pinning this up and then we'll go back to the sewing machine and do this part. All right, so we're going to sew what we pinned together, clip together, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now I'm going to move the camera so you guys can actually see what I just did. All right, so we sewed down the the right side because we had um, right side facing right side and it already <laughs> it looks so cute oh my goodness all right so there's her little face she's so cute all right now the next step is to grab four more of your um, spikes okay I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out off camera because it takes a minute but I went ahead and I had all three of the spikes like this and then I just cut them in rows that way I make sure that I get the one that's opposite the spikes that I need because you don't want to get them mixed up because then you get frustrated so I'm going to cut these off camera and then I'm going to come back and we're going to sew these alright so I have got both of my spikes cut out turned inside out ready to roll next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my face and on the right side there's another little gray spot that's for your placement of your spike and then let's see yeah that'll be right all right so then we're going to put the spike just like this right on that gray line and we're going to base stitch this in place just like we did the other one just so that it's not moving around um, that's in the instructions as well um, it's a really good idea all right while we're over here i'm going to go ahead and get my left your spikes could, should kind of be like facing down when you're putting them on and I don't I don't know how other to explain that other than yeah they should kind of be pointing down they look kind of weird being pointed up um, but yeah all right so I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine I'm gonna base these down and then I will show you guys what to do next all right we have the faces all done we've got our side um points all on our scales all on we're gonna set her aside even though i hate to because she's so cute we're gonna set her aside and i went and got my legs my front legs i believe that's what they were called Hold on. no the arms i went and got my arms and what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to match up one of the green with the dots with one of the whites. So we're going to put them right sides together. They should fit well together, one side together. And then the other one should go together. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew from here, down, and around, and then back up. We're going to be leaving this slanted part 
open. This is how you connect your arms to your body. So let me go sew that real quick. All right, so we've got it all sewn up and we've got this open so that we can turn it inside out. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple of cuts on the end of the spikes. You're just gonna make a snip on all the ends of the spikes. Then right where um, you make your little turn there, we're gonna, right where the spikes are, just like we did with the spikes, you're gonna need to make a little clip so that this will turn inside out a lot easier. Do that with both of them. And then we're gonna turn them inside out. Make sure to not cut your thread. And she does tell you to go ahead and stuff these and then base stitch this paw closed once you stuff them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I gotta finish getting all of the little claws as out as I can get them. That's so cute. All right, let me turn the, in, the other one inside out. I'll grab some stuffing and then we'll do the next step. All right, so we're ready to stuff. So I have got my little tool. You normally get um, stuff like this when you buy like a big thing of um, stuffing. And so I had this for something else, like a turning tool, <laughs> multiple uses. So I'm gonna take just a little bit and put it in there and then I'm gonna make sure that the fingers or the little claws get a little bit of this. Kind of want to make sure that those are stuffed first before you just go cramming a bunch of stuff in there. So once you get the little claws stuffed, you can put the rest of your stuffing in. Then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're only going to stuff it so much because you want to be able to close this up. And so you want to make sure that you leave yourself enough space to kind of hold it closed. Then you're going to take it and you're going to base stitch it with your machine. So just kind of squish it as much as you can, base stitch it closed, and then make sure that both arms um, kind of match and make sure that it looks like they didn't just do a left day, but they did a right day too. <laughs> Just kind of get them as even as you can. Then we're going to grab the stomach piece. And so let me finish this and then I'll grab the stomach piece and we'll attach them. All right, so we got their little arms done and it looks like they did both of their arms on arm day. So we're going to grab the little tummy piece. You're going to make sure that we follow these um, dotted lines all the way around and make sure you have these little notches because those are going to be, uh, those are going to come important later on. All right, on the top, upper part of the little belly you've got the gray again so you know where to put your pieces all right so in order to place these you need to have the little spots facing you when it lays down so that when it flips out you can see the little spots on its arms so I'm going to do one at a time and base stitch them in place and I've just matched up the gray with the arm There's one. And so what I did was I just matched them up just like that. So I know where to put my little arms. Now I'm gonna grab the body side pieces. I'm gonna cut those out really quick and then we're going to add them to his little tummy. All right, so we got his little arms or her little tummy, his or her little tummy. Um, I've got my side pieces out and you should lay them out just like this. Uh, you got your notches facing each other. We're going to put right side to right side. So I'm going to grab the left side first. It's going to have this little rounded edge right there. We're going to put right side to right side. And then I'm going to take this and sew it. And then I'm going to do the other side as well. Thank you. 
All right, sorry, my camera died on me because the battery was out. Um, but I went ahead and I sewed down both sides. So she's got both her little sides to her little belly and it is already looking so cute. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna work on her legs real quick. So I went and grabbed the legs. The legs are the ones with the little blue dots. Um, they should, they will be labeled on your panel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put right sides together just like we did with her um, front paws. Or I guess was it labeled hands? I can't remember now. Um, but this little swoopy bit, we're gonna leave open. We're just gonna be sewing around the other parts. So again, a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, so I cut you off because I have been sewing around these twice. I just wanna make sure that they're sewn well because it's, it is a stuffed animal. It is going to be um, loved on a lot. So I don't want it coming unsewn and I don't trust my sewing machine. So <laughs> I sewed it twice. Um, again, right where the little claws or paws are coming together in a V, you want to make sure that you snip that so it'll turn over nicely. At the end of the little claws and stuff, you want to go ahead and make a little snip so that again, they turn inside out like they're supposed to. And then we're going to stuff these and we're going to base stitch them closed with the stuffing on the inside, just like we did the little hands or paws on the top. All right, so we got her little tummy done. We got her little legs done. She's been arm day and leg day. All right, so if you're looking at your little back legs, when they're put together, they should make kind of like a U like that. Not, not like this, but like that. That's how they're gonna get put on. So I'm gonna do one at a time on and at the sewing machine just to make it a little bit easier. This is gonna be hard to kind of like clip together. Um, so I'm just gonna sew them as I go. So I'm gonna grab my right leg first to the right side of her little tummy and I'm gonna put it right side to right side. So you see where that little gray line is right there? That That's what we're following. So I'm gonna start on this side and you're just gonna kind of have to maneuver her to be in the place that she's supposed to be in. And we're just gonna, again, base stitch these in place. So I had to put my needle down quite a bit <clears throat> to get her to kind of um, get around that corner. So just take your time doing that. All right, so now the left leg is gonna go, can you see it? The left leg, ignore this one flapping at you. The left leg here is going to go just like that, but right sides together. Okay, your legs should look like that. Look how cute that is. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the wings. Uh, I'm going to cut those out real quick, and then we'll work on those. All right, so I went and cut out our wings. You've got the inner wings, and you've got the outer wings. We're going to put right sides together, just like we've been doing everything else. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch. We're leaving this straight line open so that we can turn it inside out. All right, so I went ahead and sewed again, like I told you guys I have been doing. And in the instructions, she wants you to kind of cut these down and pretty close to where um, your stitches are so that they'll turn inside out correctly and you won't have too much of a problem. But I went ahead and clipped the edges where it kind of is sharp, like a sharp edge. Um, and then this edge right here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to turn this inside out. And then you are going to have some stitching to do on the wings because you are going to um, stuff certain part of the wings and it just it really looks cute so let me get this inside out and then I'll show you guys Ugh, where you need to sew so you see where this white line and the rainbow kind of meet up 
you're going to want to stitch along that line and then you see these blue lines you're also going to want to stitch down those now you don't want to start up here and do the blue stitches we need this canal so that we can put some stuffing in just that part so I'm gonna go ahead and do the blue lines first I think that'll be a little easier to do first all right so it should look like that even though I know it's kind of hard to see I'm gonna go clean up all of my threads and then we'll go ahead and do I'll do the other one off camera and then I'll show you how you can stuff this little part all right, so I have a feeling this part isn't going to be like a ton of fun. So <laughs> we're going to do a little tiny bit of stuffing at a time. And we're going to start on this side where the opening is. And you're just going to start with a little bit of stuffing. And using your tool to kind of shove it in there. And then you're going to have to work this from all the way up front to all the way down the other side. <laughs> I didn't think that this would be much fun, but we're going to we're going to work it out. So just don't get frustrated, just do a little bit at a time. All right, that took way longer than it probably should have. <laughs> um, but one thing I would say is definitely start out with like smaller bits of stuffing because this is such a tiny canal to get everything through. Just take small bits and take your time because I think it really does need it. Once it's attached to the body, I think it's really going to show up. So I, I think it needs it. It's just really tiny. All right, we're going to grab the body and then with the... Um, how you tell the wings apart is you're going to want to put it like this so that you see the back side of the wing. When you sew it and attach the body, it'll go out like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to base stitch both of these down. All right, so the next part we're going to do is the head with the body. I'm going to push the head wrong sides out again. And then we're going to have to kind of match everything up. It, there's a divot, divot, kind of a divot in there. So you're going to need to kind of, oh, it, it goes in a U. So it's going to have to be kind of maneuvered and wrangled until you can get it all lined up. And then what you're going to do is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just sew both pieces together and you have got the front of the dragon all sewn and ready to go. So let me finish clipping this and then I'll sew it and then we'll get right to it. She looks so cute! Okay, we're gonna, I am gonna stop right here and go feed my children and then I'm gonna pick this back up. All right, so we've got her whole body done or her front of her body done. And now we're going to be working on the back of her head. So we're going to need a couple of things to get this going. Um, first, you're going to need to grab the head pieces. So you've got the back of the head, uh, the upper half, and the lower half. You'll see that there are zipper guides um, marked on your head. And so I'm not sure why it's measuring the way it is. But in the instructions, um, she took the zipper tape and measured it against the lining pieces. So I made my zipper tape as long as the lining. I'm going to stick, stick with that and see what happens. You are also going to need, you know, your zipper tape and then a zipper. And then on another piece, you've got your little zipper tabs. You need to cut those out and get those ready. I'm going to go ahead and put my zipper on my zipper tape. Um, I have already burnt the ends of my zipper, so make sure if you're using a nylon zipper that you've burnt the ends. All right, so I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. What she wants you to do is take the right side of your zipper tab and put it to the right side of your zipper, and then a quarter of an inch, you're just gonna sew along that. So I'm gonna go do that for both of my end. So right side to right side. Go sew those on. Alright, so I have got my zipper tabs on my zipper. 
like that. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to make sure that my zipper is closing to the left, opening to the right. It's a right-handed people thing. <laughs> we're just going to do it that way. All right. We're going to take this to the very bottom of our bottom of our head. And in the instructions, she tells you to take like a two-piece, um, two-inch piece thing of interfacing. I went ahead and interfaced all of my pieces because I had a bad experience with um, cotton canvas before. It just kind of unraveled like stupid easily. Um, so I went ahead and I interfaced this so that I wouldn't have that problem again. So you can go ahead and interface all of your pieces or you can just do the little strip like she says in the directions. It's up to you. So I'm going to take my zipper, closing to closing to the left, opening to the right, and I'm going to put it right side to right side of her little head. And then I'm just going to clip all the way across. I'm going to base stitch this on because that's what she says to do in the instructions. I think it probably just need to. I could just add the lining, but I'm going to go ahead and do follow the instructions. So go base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and extend your your uh, stitch length. All right, now that we've got this base stitched on, I'm going to grab my lining piece and on the short end, we're going to attach it right where the zipper is. So you're putting right side to the wrong side of your zipper. Now you're going to take this to your sewing machine and then go ahead and stitch a quarter of an inch all the way across. All right, so I've got my lining all attached. I went ahead and flipped it over and then I just kind of finger pressed it. You could go ahead and take it to your ironing board and press that down. It's up to you. And the instructions, she tells you to just go ahead and wait until you're completely finished uh, with the next uh, lining. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the upper part of her head and we're going to match it up and then go ahead and go back and base stitch this in place so that the zipper won't move when you're trying to add the uh, lining. So I'm going to go do that and then we will attach the other part of the lining. Okay, so I started base stitching it in at the zipper <laughs> until I got down this end. I was like, oh yeah. So I went back and I base stitched on this side too. So the whole top part of the top part of her head is base stitched in place. That looks so cute. All right, now we're going to grab our other piece of lining and we're going to put it right sides to the wrong side of the zipper. And now we're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way across and make sure to move your zipper out of the way when you're sewing, um, getting pretty close to it so that um, everything will lay down like it's supposed to. So let's go do that. All right, so we have got our lining stitched on so that when we flip it this way, all you can see is our outside. And then we need to take this to the ironing board and go ahead and do like we did with the first one and press the lining away from the zipper and make sure that our outside panel, her little, the top of her little head, is pushed away from the zipper as well. So let's go iron that. All right, so I have got the upper head out of the way. I'm gonna put that lining on that side and then the bottom of her head that way, lining on that side. And now I'm gonna press All right, I'm afraid to do that on white, so I'm gonna go grab a piece of fabric and put it over top of that and then press it and then we'll go to the next step. So I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to work under these conditions, but <laughs> um, I got everything pressed and ready to go. The next thing that we're gonna do is we need to work with this lining. Now we're gonna do this a little bit differently because I wanna turn everything through this. Um, in the original pattern, she has you turning it. There's a space, I'm sorry, my God, Miguel. You're all right. There's a space that she has marked with that little bit of gray. She wanted you to leave that open so that you could turn this whole thing through that. I'm going to do it through the lining piece because I just feel like it would be a little easier to do it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up. Um, if you lay it out flat, they don't they don't line up one short than the other. You have to pull the bottom of the lining together 
and then just she's got the directions that you just sew up as far as you can to them or sew up as far as you can on the lining and you may have to smush it down just a little bit um, and sew up as far as you can but in the direction she has you sewing all the way around we're going to leave this bottom piece right here wide open so that we can turn it so we've got the head and the lining piece the pocket piece all assembled the very bottom of my pocket piece is ready to go it's all open so that I can turn everything inside next thing I'm going to do is set this aside and I'm going to grab my tail pieces and what you're going to do is you're going to sew them right sides together and then we have to do I love how she put these on here for us and we don't have to guess but after you sew it inside out and turn it right side out you are going to sew these little extras right here and it it really does like just like the wings to make it kind of poof out that really does give it an extra look so i'm ready to get this done so i can show you guys it's gonna be cute i went ahead and i sewed around again i've been doing um double stitching so i've been sewing it once and then going back and sewing it again now where the all of the little angles are <laughs> there's a lot of them you're gonna need to go in and clip so that these will turn right side out so all of these little like pokey outy things just make sure don't get your stitches okay so I think oh there's one more right there I'm gonna make a little extra cut there like a triangle just so that will turn it inside out hopefully a little bit better all right so let's turn it inside out on one side of your tail panel you're going to see these two lines right here you're going to start here and then just follow this line down to like that little tail fin and then this one you're going to start here and then just follow the line to that tail fin these aren't going to be stuffed they're going to be flat the rest of this tail is what's going to be stuffed all right so we've got our little line stitched in the next thing that we need to do is grab some stuffing and i'm going to put just a little bit in so that i can make sure that it gets into that tail fin which i guess is what you would call it i don't know i'll have to ask my drag it, dragon experts downstairs <laughs> they know what it's called so i'm just stuffing in that point just right there on the end and now I'm just going to start filling it up now what we're going to do is I've left myself a little bit of space I'm going to go ahead and I am going to base stitch this closed and that way um, it'll be a little easier to attach it to the back part of the dragon so let's go do that all right so our tail is all done and I told you having those little inserts that she's been putting into all the pieces really make the uh just makes everything kind of stand out on its own and it looks really really cool all right the next thing that we're going to need to do before we move on is grab our last set of scales we're going to put them right sides together sew around them turn them inside out and uh, then we're going to be putting the fin and the scales on the back of the panel so let's go do that so we've got the tail and we've got the um scales so the reason why I cut out the pieces the way I did was so that I could kind of keep these instructions with the pieces so that I would know where to put everything. Um, but she has marked it again with the little gray and the seam allowance because her, her seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. Um, this is about a little over an eighth of an inch um, where to put your stuff. So you can automatically tell, okay, well, this is going to be the scale. This is going to be the tail. So if you wanted to go ahead and just cut out all of your stuff go for it um, you always got the directions online that you can download uh, so if you forget the steps or where something's at they're always there I went ahead and put my scales on and my tail on and I'm gonna go and base stitch these together really quickly alright so those pieces are nice and basted on we're gonna take the right piece and put it sides right sides to right side and then we're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down connecting everything 
making sure hopefully that you've sewn your tail on there close enough um, that it will be in the seam. So let's go sew that. All right, so we got all of that put together. There's his little booty, or her little booty. All right, next thing she wants you to do is she wants you to attach the head and the body. And she wants you to leave this open so that you can turn everything inside through that. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna do it through our inside zipper pockets. So what I'm gonna need to do then is to put this right side to right side and then it is kind of a curve so you're going to have to kind of um, mess around with that. I know a lot of people don't like curves <laughs> and I hear you but if you want to get the angles and everything of this stuffed animal you got to deal with curves. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to kind of take my time and make sure all the curves are where they're supposed to be and then the head, the uh, back of the head and the booty will all be attached. All right, so our back panel is all done. The next thing that we're gonna do is start working on the straps. So I have got two 45 inch straps. Now, I find that 40 is okay for kids. It's just, it just depends on you and who you're making this for. Um, you know your kid the best. So I'm gonna make them 45, just a little bit bigger, just in case also need two three and a half these are my measurements okay guys this is what I'm gonna do on my bag just to make it a little um, bigger just in case there's a bigger kid that wants this <laughs> um, three and a half inches for the D ring straps um, I'm also going to use two one inch D rings I also have a bunch of these plastic strap connectors. I wish I had um, something like plastic D-rings, but I don't have them in my stash. But I bought these on Amazon because it came with the one inch webbing and these, and then also some of the book bag kind of like strap things, uh, the snap together things, you know what I'm talking about. So I, I like to use these on that. So let's grab our straps. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one strap I'm going to put it through my strap adjuster, back down again, and I'm going to give myself like an inch and a half-ish of tail. I'm going to take this to my industrial to do this so I don't have to switch my thread out, and I'm just going to make a box, a little rectangle, a little box, um, to, so that these two are sewn together. Do that for both of your straps, and then we'll go into the next step. All right, so I went around and I did just a little, a little rectangle, a little square. Um, that's all you need to do, especially when you're working with one inch webbing. You really don't need like all the X's and stuff. I normally do that on like the one and a half inch. It's up to you. Make sure that you burn the ends of your webbing. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll come undone. Do both ends. Make sure that you burn the ends of your webbing because that will come back to haunt you. All right, so I want to grab my little strap, my D-ring connectors, and I'm gonna place my D. Whoops. I'm gonna place my D-ring inside. I'm gonna close it up, and then if you look on the back of your back panel where his little booty is, there's another little gray spot for you. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna clip it there, and then I'm gonna go baste it at the sewing machine so it'll stay there. And I'm going to do that for both of them. All right, so take this to the sewing machine and baste them down. Make sure that your um, zipper pocket is out of the way so you don't accidentally sew anything together that you're not supposed to. So let's go do that. All right, now we're at the next part. So we've got our strap done. We've got our connectors on our bag. The next thing that we're going to do with the part that kind of folded over our strap adjuster, we can kind of see the end right here. We're going to take this strap and we're going to go straight down like this, okay? We're going to take that and put it through our D-ring, through the right side, coming out through the left side. We're going to pull, 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 and we're going to keep all of this straight. I have not turned it at all. I'm keeping it all straight. And then I'm going to put the strap back through the strap connector, back down it, and then you've got your adjustable strap. The way she wants you to put it on here is to not just do it just like that. 
So you've got your strap adjuster like that, like that. Don't do that. What she wants you to do is she wants you to flip it over and then make a little box around that. And I think it's actually pretty cool. You can, um, so that if you sew it like this, it'll just kind of hang over like that. Instead of just, if you sew it like this, then you'll see all of that. So sewing it on upside down like that is brilliant. So what I'm going to do again is show you before I take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to take it like this and then I'm going to fold it over and it should look like this. So you're going to have to either pin it or just kind of like pick it up and take it to the sewing machine. All I'm going to do is just a little square all the way around and I will take you to the sewing machine this time. I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm bringing it to my industrial just because I'm lazy and don't want to change out my thread. <laughs> but you can do this project on your domestic, okay? So just don't be like me. Don't be lazy. All right, so I've got my strap. I'm going to turn it upside down like that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So it's not straight on. It's got that little curve. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to make a simple box out of it. Make sure that you hold your thread when you start sewing. That way you can pull it to the back. Make sure that your strap isn't crooked. <laughs> that it's kind of straight on with the head. I'm going to pull my threads through the back. Cut them, burn the ends, and then we will do the next strap. All right, so we've got that attached, and I really like how it kind of flaps over so that you don't have to look at that. All right, we're going to do it again. So the strap has flapped over our um, strap adjuster, so the edge I can see right here. I'm going to follow it down, keeping it all nice and straight. I'm going to come down here to my D-ring. I'm going to bring it up, pull it through, keeping everything straight. I'm going to come in and then back down again. We're not sewing it straight and on. We're going to lift this up and fold this over just like we did the first one. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that. All right, so we've got all of our back prepped and ready to go. I have pushed our little face in so that we can put right sides to right sides. We got to turn this inside out and stuff it and you're done. All right, so first things first. I'm going to start lining up the necks and I'm just going to kind of clip all the way around her little body. All right, so we're, we got all sewn around. All right, the next thing she said to do is right here where the head and the neck come together, you're going to want to make a little notch so that when you turn it inside out, it'll kind of uh, sit like it's supposed to. So I'm going to make a little notch. Be careful. Do not cut your threads. Hopefully that's enough. So I've just got my little notch there. Sorry, McGonagall, if I'm punching you in the face. All right, now we're going to take our baby and put her through here. That's just so cute. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our stuffing. And I am hoping that you can see what I'm doing. I hope so. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of fold this down because this is going to get kind of in the way while we're trying to stuff this thing. So I'm going to start on her little booty and then I'm going to work on her little head because that's going to take a lot of stuffing. <laughs> Cause she got a big head. All right, let's do that. All right, so before you commence with stuffing your dragon, go back around all of his legs, his wings, everything, and make sure that everything got caught when you were sewing it around. Because if you accidentally like left something out and you've already stuffed your dragon, it's gonna be hard. You're gonna have to take all that stuffing out and start all over again. So go ahead all the way around the dragon's little body and make sure that you've got you got all, all of her bits on the inside. <laughs> all right, now we're going to stuff her. Now what we need to do, if you're happy with how much stuffing she's got in her, um, if you're happy with all of that, you're going to take 
your zipper pouch back out and then we're going to go ahead and top stitch it closed and then you'll be done all right so now i've got that all closed up i'm going to take it and i'm going to push you, we have got her little horns left to do and then she's done all right so i've got her little horns cut out and what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to sew them right sides together we're going to leave this edge down at the bottom open so that we can turn them inside out all right so i've gone ahead and i've sewed both of them together i went ahead and did my sew it twice because that's what we do I turned one inside out. The next thing that you're supposed to do is you're supposed to fill this up. Again, I'm just going to get a little tiny bit and shove it down into the smallest part of the horn before I start just going kind of nuts filling it up. All right, you need to have a little bit of room so that this can kind of come together like this. The next step, she wants you to take a piece of thread, needle and thread, and she wants you to kind of go... Um, in and out all the way around so that you can kind of pull this together and it, it kind of like closes up closes it up but not completely make sure you got a knot at the ends <laughs> so it doesn't come undone all right now once you get all the way around you're supposed to pull it taut i don't think you're supposed to close it all the way up i could be wrong i'll double check the instructions but um, you're supposed to pull it taut and then not knot it off. I would just think you'd have to do it all the way. Let me check the instructions real quick, but I'm pretty sure I would think that you would need to close it up as much as you could. Let me go check that. Okay, so the instructions did say to close it up all the way. I am going to hold it taut with my other finger. And then I'm just going to kind of make a knot right here. So that it'll stay taut. Okay. And then another one just for good measure. Now, the instructions also said if you wanted to, you could take the excess um, thread that you have from closing it up. Um, and go ahead and take it and attach it to to the dragon's head and I think that's a good idea. Now, um, she wants you to use a ladder, set, ladder stitch to put the little horns on. So I'm going to take my thread to and put it in and then kind of make it go to the outer edge where I'm going to be sewing. Ugh. Okay. The ladder stitch is a stitch that allows you to attach something together so that you don't necessarily see your stitches. Um, ladder stitches are great if you know how to do them. <laughs> and there are tons and tons and tons of tutorials on YouTube. So I am just going to go ahead and start on this. So you're going from side to side. So I went in from my side to the dragon, to the horn, then I'm coming straight across from where my thread just came out. I'm going in and then out again. Where are you caught on? And I probably should have put beeswax on my thread, but whatever. Too late now. Okay, coming out of the white we're going to go back into the horn straight across from where we came out of this is not an in-depth tutorial on how to do a ladder stitch again there are plenty out there on youtube but i don't think i need to spend an hour's worth of footage showing you guys how to do this so i'm just going to keep going around until i've sewn all the way around so you see how the stitches kind of go back where they look like they're straight across from each other kind of you pull it taut and you don't even see them all right so i'm going to do this off camera all the way around um, because this is going to take a while um, and i was trying to keep this video short for you guys just look up ladder stitch um, i have a video with the scrubby pads that has a ladder stitch you guys can look that up and um, figure out how to do that 
it's it's actually really easy and it's a really quick stitch to be able to kind of put your stuff together without anybody kind of seeing all of your seams or your stitches so I'm gonna do that and I'll report back in alright guys so what did you think I really 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 like this pattern and thank you so much to Sew Day Suni if I'm saying it wrong please forgive me but thank you so much for letting me do this video it was a lot of fun um, being able to put all of this together so quickly let's talk about some plus and, and minuses of this pluses I've made other stuffed dragons for my kids in the past and I didn't have an embroidery machine so what I had to do was take the satin stitch on my regular sewing machine and try and do around all of the pieces and make them look halfway decent and it just never turned out like I could never sell them they didn't look good enough to me to be able to sell the plus that I like is the fabric the eyes and everything are already on the fabric you don't have to do any of that stuff plus let's talk the fabric so in the video I show you guys that I interfaced all of this beforehand because I had a bad experience with um, what was it cotton canvas before it just shred to pieces this was a really good fabric um, I noticed that it didn't shred very much it was just a few pieces here and there but nothing like the other one that I worked with so this was a good fabric so that is definitely a plus when you're making a book bag for a little one or you're making any kind of stuffed animal for a little one you need good fabric because otherwise it's not going to last very long so definitely a positive on that definitely a positive on um, the way that it's printed on also also the instructions for everything were very clear I, re I really really like it so definitely a positive the only negative I have is the back so um, you I can't use the zippers that I already have I'm probably gonna have to go out and buy specific zippers for these so that the front and the back of the neck will actually fit each other if you already have these zippers at home then it probably shouldn't be a problem um, but I mean it wasn't a huge like you can't really tell um, that's kind of right here is where I had to kind of fudge it to make it work so I mean you can't really tell but my other issue is I know that this is supposed to be a backpack but you've got this big opening for your um, lining and it's huge up here for his head and then it goes real small for his neck and then widens out in the body because of how narrow the neck is and I don't know that you would get very much out of it and I'd probably end up having to go in after stuff for my kids because it's all down at the bottom so what I'm planning on doing with my next couple of ones that I have to do I'm gonna cut my lining off right here and just make a small pocket I don't think my kids are gonna be putting a lot in this this is gonna be them running around pretending like they're dragon daddies or something I don't know <laughs> but um, I'm probably gonna just cut that lining off right about there and that way they do have a pocket to put something if they want to put their Pokemon cards and stuff in there they can just put them in there um, I don't think I'm going to let the, the lining comes to like right about here, give or take. Um, I don't think that I'm going to, I don't think that they're going to put that much stuff in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut the lining off here and then I don't have to worry about like trying to put things in their book bag through the neck because it gets smaller and then it gets wider and it'll just be kind of hard to get things in and out. That's my only thing. Um, so I think next time I'm just going to kind of cut it off at the neck not cut your neck off sorry cut the lining off of the neck and then kind of go from there um, hand sewing that's a plus I think a lot of people take take for granted learning basic skills and basic sewing things that they need to know one of those things is a ladder stitch if you've never done a ladder stitch before this is a perfect opportunity for you to go ahead and learn how to do it how to do it around the horns um, and I know how to do this and I know what a great stitch it is but until you get to use it you really don't know what a great stitch it is I use it all the time we did the back differently if you noticed she wanted you to put everything through the back and you had to do a ladder stitch there I was just kind of trying to eliminate that one place where you'd have to hand sew it you don't have to um, so just do it the way the instructions say if you want to I'm really glad they go together quickly <laughs> 
because I have a pile to do. The kids wanted one and they all have to have different colors because it is what it is. And then I wanted to have some extras um, to sell at the store. So I think they're cute. I've got them in all the colors. <laughs> also, let's talk about Enchanted and k and Custom Fabrics uh, Swap Shop. They're are a lot of people that want to get some fabrics that are from the UK however shipping prices are just outrageous for shipping locally right now much less the UK so K&A and then Enchanted got together and they did a swap shop and what they did was you go on Enchanted's page like for someone like me in the US I go to Enchanted's page and I go ahead and order everything that I wanted to get a bunch of dragons <laughs> and then I don't pay shipping when the product gets to K&A, they're shipping all of their fabrics to K&A. K&A divides it all up, packs all of the orders, and then ships everything out. They send you an invoice for how much the shipping was going to cost to ship from them, not from the UK. So it actually ends up saving you a ton of money in shipping. So if you want to try that out, I'm sure the swap shop is coming up soon. It's probably towards the end of the year, just depending upon when this video gets to go out. <laughs> K&A is also carrying the dragons now. If you want to purchase some from K&A, you can. If you want to go on Sews, this site, you can. They blow my mind away on how much stuff that they have on their site go check them out because there's so many plushies. If you're a person that likes to sew plushies, they have got a ton of stuff. So go check them out. That was a long outro. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Or if you want to subscribe and see if we get any more plushies in anytime soon, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Or if you have any questions, comments, something wasn't quite clear, I will do my best to clear it up. If you also use a smaller zipper and still have problems, go to their site, ask them questions, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure out what's going on. Anyway, thanks for joining us again on FaithWorks Design. Bye, guys.